Hey, have you ever wondered if uh, the caution match is actually worth it? Stick around. Hey, you hear it, the caution mash, huh? Bohemian Pilsner, that's what we're gonna brew. Uh, we're gonna use a white yeast, uh, Bohemian Lager yeast, and also the smack pack, so we have to break a little baggie inside, smack it. So yeah, what we're gonna use for this one is nine kilos of uh, Man Bohemian Pilsner malt. We're gonna need one kilo, 680 grams of Carapils, and we're also gonna need one kilo, 260 grams of um, white wheat malt, all right? Let's wait everything, mill everything, and get everything ready for tomorrow. Hey, hi everyone. All right, we're at Clandestino. It's Sunday today. We're gonna get everything ready. We're gonna get our mash done ready. Uh, and we're gonna get everything for the decoction. So we're gonna do two decoctions in this beer to get those uh, melanoidins. And yeah, let's start. Just to start, as you know, we're gonna start with 11 and a half gallons of water. So we're gonna fill up our mash tun with water and I'll explain the process in a bit. All right, let's fill them up. All right, everyone, uh, we got a, our mash tun ready to start pouring our grain in. But before that, just to, we have everything set up. So let's put eight, oh, just fill eight and a half gallons of water in the pot that is going to be our uh, sparch water. So might as well get it ready. While we're doing all the stuff, I can heat it up and get it ready by the time I need it, all right? So let's fill them up. All right, everyone, uh, while we're waiting for the, my, uh, the sparch water to fill up, we're going to do our grain in and let it end to 55 degrees is what the water is. We're gonna dump the do our grain in and then we're gonna start our first decoction. I'll explain you what's gonna happen later. All right, uh, let's uh, do our grain in. All right, everyone, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna start our decoction. So we're gonna remove four liters of, um, or one gallon of, um, or of worth. So it's grain and liquid, is have to be a little bit of thick, not too uh, watery. And that's what the crucial part is. So when we're gonna, heat, we're gonna do our first basically mash, we're gonna heat up or, or that grain, we're gonna raise it to the temperature we're gonna use for, uh, we're gonna, mashing so basically what it is is 65 celsius where we're going to go and then after with a 65 we're going to leave it there mashing obviously and then uh we're going to do iodine test then when when it's ready uh we're going to boil it but what is very crucial here when we are heating it's very crucial to be uh, like stirring the grain the whole time so you don't scorch your beer okay so let's remove four liters into our uh, decoction uh, kettle i guess all right let's do it This is basically uh, how it's supposed to look. So now what we're gonna do is mash it in. So we're gonna heat it up to 65 Celsius and let it a, a mash in. All right, so let's heat it up. All 
All right, everyone, let's just see. Hey, we, we filled up or no, as you guys, uh, all right, as you've seen, we transfer or remove four liters. You see the, the, how thick it needs to be. So what I did, it was basically heat it up to 65 degrees. What I normally do, I put the flame really, really low so I can heat up and control, so I can control basically how hot it's gonna get. You put too much flame, it's not too much liquid or too much volume, it might sky up uh, easily. So I do it this way and remember if you, for some reason, your temperature was higher than 65. You can always get a little water for your mash tun and add it there to balance the temperature. It's not a big deal, uh, but yeah, uh, as you've seen, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna let it there for 30 minutes as I never used this grain before. So I'm gonna let it there 30 minutes and then I'm going to do the iodine test. And based of the result of the iodine test in the first mash, basically it's gonna tell me how much I need to match the second one or when I'm gonna finish as well. All right, so for now, let's wait a half an hour and the time being, let's start heating up our water for sparge to 80 degrees. So by the time we need it, it's to be about like 75, that's what we're gonna use. If it goes lower, at least it'll be in the 70s, it will be easy to raise it up again. All right, well, let's do it. Well, everyone, uh, just to, I really want to show you something. Uh, not because we get into the temperature, it's going to remain that temperature the whole time. So what I'm doing, this is the second time I'm checking. Uh, what I normally do, I'm gonna show you here. I got a thermometer in there. So I know it's a 65 right now, so I can see it. So every basically five minutes, 10 minutes, I open it up, checking it up. If it needs to be, uh, if we need to raise the temperature, we raise the temperature. Uh, it normally goes down normally. It it shouldn't go higher, but uh, yeah, that's uh, one way you can monitorize, uh, monitor, monitor your uh, machine. All right, let's keep brewing. All right, everyone. Hey, basically, it's been half an hour, so we're gonna do iodine test to where we at, and yeah, let's check. All right, everyone, so this is the more critical part of the decoction. We're going to start boiling. Yes, you hear right. We're gonna boil the grain, not the main one, just uh, the, the, the one we have decoctioning. Uh, we're going to uh, basically heat it up to boil and then 10 minutes boil. So it's very crucial to be stirring that pot so we don't get scorched beard at the end, okay? So yeah, let's heat it up to, well, let's bring it to boil for 10 minutes and then we're gonna put it back into the main mash. And then we're gonna do the second decoction. But for now, let's start boiling. All right, everyone. So technically, this is the most crucial part of the decoction. So we bring it to boil and we're gonna be stirring this thing for 10 minutes. And the reason why we're doing this is because we want to uh, obtain or extract the famous uh, melanoidins. And the melanoidins is basically the uh, smell of a fresh bread. So it's something we want in our beer. All right, technically we're finished. Uh, it's been 10 minutes boiling. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put, uh, pour it back into the main mash. We're gonna stir it, and then we're gonna remove six liters. Same thing, and then we're gonna do the same process again, okay? Let's do it. All right, let's remove six liters. All right, everyone, so we, try, we already got the six liters. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna start a basically mashing, but just because in the real decoction time or when they used to do it back then, they, they literally what they wanted to get is to the, the, the mashing temperature, because it would be faster to get this way by taking a small portion, bring it really hot and bring it back, than 
try to heat up the whole thing that they used to make. So in this case, all we want in this beer is the melanoidin. So what we're gonna do now is basically decoction the second part. But while we're doing the, the mashing in the second part, we also gonna do the mashing in the main one as we're not gonna do anything different or any, uh, we're not gonna do any other uh, decoction. So by the time we finish this, the main mash is done as well. We just pour it in there and we can start doing the mash out. Well, heat it up to 75 to do the mash out. Uh, but stick around and you see what's going on. All right, everyone, so technically, uh, we're done with the matching of the second decoction, so now what we're gonna do is boil it. We're gonna boil for 10 minutes again, and then we're gonna bring it back into the main mash. As you guys know, we already started mashing the main one, so by the time we pour it back into it, we can just literally start uh, raising our temperature to 75 to do mash out, All right? We have the sparse water ready already, so yeah, let's do something. All right, we finished boiling, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna put it back into the main mash. Uh, the main mash is already already being mashed, so what we're gonna do is raise our temperature to 75 to start mash out. Well, we're 75, and now we're gonna do the transfer. All right, we finished transferring. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna start boiling. So we're gonna uh, light it up. And also we're gonna do the calculation of how much uh, hop we're gonna use for bitterness. And we only gonna use sass for this one, okay? Let's do it. All right, everyone. Uh, we got this sass. This sass is a 4.5% alpha acid. Uh, we aim it for 40 IBUs, 60 liters or 15 gallons, a little bit less than 60 liters. Um, so my calculation tell me uh, 266 grams of uh, sass, and we're gonna add it at the beginning of the boil. All right, we have a 266 gram of um, sass. This sass is a 4.5% alpha acid. We aim it for a 40 IBUs in 60 liters. Okay, let's add it to it. All right, uh, we're getting close to the 15 minutes uh, left on boiling. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get uh, 85 grams of sass. Uh, we're gonna add it when it's 15 minutes left. We're also gonna add the weir flock, and we're also gonna put the weir pull arm so it starts sterilizing and connect the pump and everything. So yeah, let's get it done. Five grams of sass, we're gonna add it, 15 minutes left on boiling, let's add it to it. All right, we're almost done. So what we're gonna add is 85 grams of sass and we're gonna add it as a hob stand. When we are cooling, while we're cooling about 80 Celsius, that's when we're gonna add it to it. So now let's uh, wait it and get it ready for what we need it. 85 grams of sauce, hop stand, 80, uh, 80 Celsius. Let's add it.
All right, uh, as you've seen, we transfer already. Um, we're going to, I set my fermenter to 12 Celsius. And what I'm going to do is uh, pitch, no, yeah, pitch the yeast now. Hey everyone, well, we're done. Uh, we got a final gravity 1053. I was expecting 1052. I guess we do pretty good. Uh, the volume we were expecting was what we got. Uh, everything is going pretty good. So let's see what happened. Let it ferment. Okay, for now, let's go rest. Hey everyone, well, uh, it's been about like six, seven days. So what we're gonna do now, we got a uh, gravity to 114. So what are we going to, 1014, sorry. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to uh, raise our temperature to 18 and a half Celsius. So we're gonna leave it there for another three or four days so that the, the yeast will uh, eat his own uh, diacetyl. And after that, we're going to put it to lagerine and then kegging and etc. etc. But for now, we just put it to uh, the acetyl rest. Well, as you've seen, uh, we moved the temperature, we raised it to 18 and a half, so we're gonna let it there for a couple of days, well, four days about that, and then we're gonna come and check, try it. If we don't detect any diacetyl, we're gonna keep to the next step. But for now, uh, let's go rest. guys how's it going well the part that i enjoy the most and <laughs> the one that i like it more um look at that beauty what a beautiful color i don't know if the lie allow you to see the color but it's incredible nice uh you can see the fingers through i don't know if you can see it oh i guess you can you can see it's like it's super clear um before we try subscribe to the channel activate the notification bell hit that like button and leave your comment. I read every comment. I answer uh, comments that needs to be answered. I answer it. If not, I give a like back uh, to your comment. And I try to, uh, we're trying to build a nice community here, right? So yeah, so let's talk about this beer. First of all, let's see what's the aroma. Bro, well, in the aroma, the first thing I can Notice is the sauce, obviously. Uh, bastante, uh, sorry, very spicy, you know, the sauce is floral, spicy kind of smell. And, but also we can smell bread, which is, this is thanks of the decoction. Decoction brings those melanoidins. Melanoidin is basically the smell of a fresh bread. And how did that create? As I said on the video is a, uh, alpha acid, no, alpha uh, amino acids, proteins, and sugars when they mix create the melanoidins. Um, this is what I can 
notice and smell or an aroma. Mm. Wow. Sass, immediately, boom, I'm there. Um, when I do a Bohemian Pilsner or a Czech Pilsner, my go-to is try to get the closest possible to what is my favorite beer, Ukrail. I think it's one of the best beer ever made. <laughs> and this one gets very, very, very close. It's not like it yet. I'm trying to get the closest possible, but this is, I guess, is the closest I ever get being honest, in everything. Appearance, uh, carbonation volumes, uh, lace. Take in consideration that I pour this beer to get the shots and it's like five, 10 minutes later, it's actually get to sit in front of the camera and start filming this. So take in consideration how like the, the, the head retention that the beer has, if it can stay for that long, just keep that in consideration and yeah, I will do it again. Yes, definitely will. Will a, I got a little half a sack of the Bohemian Pilsner from uh, Weyerman, I believe it's called. Yeah, uh, so I probably do it again. I really like it. I really, really, really like it. But uh, this season, just time to start playing with the Mexican Pilsner to see if we get the chance to brew it again at Moon Underwater. I'll be talking to them. They say we might. So just keep. Stay tuned, see if we can actually brew at Moon Underwater again, another Mexican Pilsner. But yeah, I think it's a pretty good beer. Uh, I will do it again, definitely, no doubt. Uh, trying to play with labels and all this stuff. It's kind of cool. Gets a little bit more, the channel make it a little bit warmer and more like, you, you know what I mean. Well, yeah, I want to thank everyone for following the channel. Thanks everyone for watching and yeah, we'll see you the next one.